Yo guys, what up? Me, Patrick LeVar. So I want to quickly share uh, this little quick video that I did. I was testing out the Motion Cam app again, uh, trying to see like how I can really maximize the quality out of these DNG files here. And I've stumbled upon a, a cool little workflow here. Um, again, I shot everything in 4K, uh, and which is like I, I hate doing because like I seriously can't even edit this here. Like, look, look, this is my this is my playback. I mean, look, my two frames per second, right? This is but that's that's why I don't really do 2K or 4K a lot on my at all because I can't play back, I can't edit, I can't get into a rhythm with the edit, the editing and the beat of the music. So what I did here to work around this, I ended up going down to the setting wheel here. I go to my master settings. I take my timeline and I literally just went down to 720 by uh, 576, right? And I go ahead and save that. And it's going to make my screen really small here. And then another thing that I also do before I started color grading everything, um, well, before I do, I would normally just do everything, just edit it, no grading, don't do anything to the files and just grade, just edit and get my, my edit done. And once I do have my edit done, um, then I'll go back and grade. But even after I grade and I'm still tweaking stuff a little bit, you see this up here to the top, right? This little, you can disable this and it's going to take away all the effects the fusion effects, all the text uh, text out, all the color grading, it's gonna strip everything away and just focus on performance on playback. So now if we go back here and play, hit, hit play, <laughs> it's kind of like still the same, right? Plus I'm also doing a screen capture recorder right now. So normally I can get a little bit more playback. I might get like 15, 20 frames per second of playback. And then also if you go to your playback up here, use optimized media, and then I go to my pro my timeline proxy. Normally I'll set this all the way down to quarter resolution. And I already made proxy files. If you click on the file, right click, generate, generate, optim, optim, generate, generate optimized media. Once I do that, um, I can get a little bit more playback, but it really won't show you because here I'm doing a screen capture, but let's see. It's making a little bit of different. Now I'm up to 11 frames per second, okay? But basically, when I'm not screen capturing, I can get a little bit of playback and it will drag a little bit. But that's the reason why I just don't like doing 4K. Everybody's like, oh, you should do 4K, 4K. Yeah, you can't edit 4K. You got to have a beefy machine to do any type of editing. And like for between HD and 4K, if you're not watching it on a 4K capable device, you're not watching it in 4K. So like I don't see the big deal. I rather focused on getting the highest quality out of HD possible before I even worry about up the 4D. So anyways, um, that's that's my issue with the four, uh, D and G 4Ks. I can't edit. So what I end up doing here, let me quickly show you the grade. Man, this was, this was probably one of the best grades I've gotten out of this here. Let me go ahead and switch back to my uh, optimized media. I'm gonna go to timeline proxies. I'm gonna turn that off so I got the highest quality. And then I'm actually gonna go back to my timeline and go ahead and bring it back up to 1920 by 1080 HD because I'm not going to try to play back right now. I just want to show you guys here these files. So what I did here is um, I was shooting everything with standard Samsung app, motion cam app, and I put on this this ND, uh, not ND filter. Actually, I didn't even use an ND because it was super cloudy this day and it was uh, rainy. And what I ended up doing was just using my shutter speed to control my, my, uh, my exposure. So like my shutter speed was like, over sometimes it was in the hundreds because I know I didn't need to have it at 24 frames at 50 because a motion blur because I'm just filming really static stuff flowers these plants a couple of times my daughter ran across but that was it so I didn't need to have that cinematic motion blur so um, I ended up using this USKI vision it is a 75 millimeter super macro lens I'll have the link down below here and this thing is fantastic, man. So I got I got some really cool close-up shots using that, plus the DNGs here. And then what I did here, typically I'll go into my color tab, and here I can uh, go ahead and select, you know, my clip. Go down here. Where is it at? Not that one. Custom. I don't know why it's on custom right now. Where am I at? Let's see what's going on here. Oh, you know what? It changed my color profile. I bet you it crashed here a minute ago, so I had to reset everything. Okay, but let me quickly show you something here. This is this is normally for my my paid guide that I'm about to release here. I'm releasing this paid guide about, but I'm I'm gonna give you a little quick snippet. 
I changed some of my settings here, guys. I went DaVinci Resolve Color Management, Automatic Color Management, tick that off. Then I went to Custom Mode. Then I went to Input, Color Space, Area Log C, Timeline, Area Log C. And then I skipped down to Output Color, uh, Rec. 709, 2.4 Gamma. And then I went to Limit Output Gamut to 7.9. And then I tick this off, inverse DRT for SR blah, 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 conversion. I turn that off and that will save me a lot of highlights. Now there's a couple of other things that I did to it, which I can't tell you guys at the moment because that's for my pay people who paid for me. But anyways, um, so I did that. And then now what I've been doing here is I've been using the HDR wheels, the high dynamic uh, wheels here to grade or necessarily adjust my exposure. So for example here, I mean, this is super fantastic, like how deep you can get. If you scroll all the way here and you hold this, it will show you what the blacks are, what they consider black. And then you go to the next one, this is dark, right? Then you go to the next one, this is shadow. That's what they're considering to be a shadow. And then if you click this arrow here to go up more, um, let's see here, let me go all the way to the top. There we go. Now we got specular, which is not a lot of specular. We got highlights, there's our highlights. Then we go light, right? And even like if I, for example, if I go to light, I'm gonna go down here to exposure. Now check this out, I go up, you can barely see it. If I go down, oh, hang on, let me turn it back on. Make sure that's back on, okay, good. So let me do it again, I go up, look at that. And then I go down, whoo, like I can control extremely detail what you want to as far as get exposure. Now, if I go down here, light again, there's light. Here's shadows, the shadow areas. Okay, we wanna bring up those shadows a little bit. Boom, bring them up, bring them down. You know, fantastic, fantastic control using these HDR sliders. And again, uh, you can go in here and add some color into the shadows or the lights or into the even into the specular. But what I've been doing as an overall, let me go back here and undo what I just did here. So now what I do, like if I wanna just adjust the overall image, Instead of going back into my, my primary wheels and lift gamma gain, lift gamma gain and all, now I'm just going into my HDR slider. I'm going to global. And then in global, I will just use this, like bring that up, bring that down. I mean, it's just so much more easy on the image. Like, look at that. I'm bringing it up, but it doesn't look horrible, right? And look, and I'm bringing it down and it looks nice and balanced and even. So this is what I've been doing here uh, and a couple of other little tricks that I've added to here. But this is fantastic. I wanted to share this out with you guys. So this was like, I shot a whole bunch of D&G uh, clips here and I wanted to test this, this work, color workflow out. And I didn't really do any color grading to these things. I just did white balance and, and the exposure. I exposed everything kind of low under 62 point because that's where I like, to me, it's a nice little cinematic sweet spot as far as exposure, right? My, my, my darks are not too dark and my uh, highlights are not extremely blown out. And one other thing here, um, I basically went into my raw camera settings and then I basically been pushing how far can I push the sharpness and all these so I've been using normally I would go 10 sharpness 10 color balance and 10 midtone details now I've, I've, I've actually done I went 25 sharpness 25 color balance and 25 midtones that's kind of like my new settings here and then if I need to make any adjustments like to the tent or something like that I'll go ahead and do that but pretty much all across these images, they all have sharpness 25, color boost 25, and midtone detail 25. So super fantastic. And uh, the results are absolutely fantastic. I'm super excited about this. Now, I didn't even use, like I said, I didn't use my ND filter on this because it, the, the weather was overcast and cloudy and that's perfect weather for uh, the cell phones, really. Uh, what I wanted to do also, what I do here, now once I've got my edit and it's all ready to go, you know, after I struggle, to get my edits where I wanted it to be and everything. What I end up doing is right before I leave, I go into here and I'll go back into my master settings. I'll take the, the timeline and crank it up all the way to uh, 30, uh, 3072 at 2040 Vista Vision, whatever it is, basically the, the highest resolution I can output on the free version of DaVinci Resolve. I will go to that and then um, export. And when I go to my export, I'll also come down to this tab and go to Ultra HD and then export there. So I'm kind of like going to the highest settings as far as output and timeline. I don't know if timeline really makes a difference, but I just did it anyways. Uh, you could probably just keep it on a 1920 timeline and then just come into here and go to Ultra HD and then export it out. It's gonna give you a warning like, hey, are you sure you wanna do this? This is, Your timeline's not matching. 
and I just say yes, and then I'll export it out like that. So that was just a quick little run through of this little video, guys. Um, definitely enjoy the website. I got a bunch of other stuff that I'll be pumping out exclusively to the web page here. Again, like I'm just not getting any love on YouTube as much as I used to. And you know what? I, I run to try to keep my family connected to me without having to go to YouTube or Instagram. You can just always come to my website here and be up to date on what's happening and stuff like that. So take a look at that. Join the email down there too, because in the email, the people on the email list will get special codes to get uh, the price reduction on some of my, my upcoming guides. So if you're not on that list, you might be paying full price compared to somebody who's on the list who could be paying half price. So stay tuned for that. Patrick LeVar, keep filming. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.